a warm greeting. Today is Saturday, September 2, 2023. I am the meteorologist Ruben Garcia. At the time of recording this video, it is 7 o'clock in the morning in the Caribbean, where we are closely monitoring a strong tropical wave that has a high probability of developing into a tropical cyclone as it approaches the northeastern Caribbean region over the next weekend. In this video, I will be specifically discussing this tropical wave and analyzing the different forecasts from global models, as well as the trends to get an idea of how much risk it represents for the eastern and northeastern Caribbean. Before we get into that, I wanted to mention that the remnants of Tropical Storm Adalia are generating heavy rains and winds near the island of Bermuda. However, it is not anticipated to reorganize into a tropical cyclone because this system has merged with a cold front. On the other hand, we have Tropical Storm Gert, which remains stationary over the waters of the North Atlantic, but it is expected to begin turning northward and is anticipated to dissipate over colder waters of the Atlantic in the coming days. During the past night, Tropical Storm Katya formed northwest of the Cape Verde Islands, and it is expected to be a short-lived cyclone as it moves northwestward, gradually losing tropical characteristics due to cooler surface temperatures. Now, let's talk about this strong tropical wave that promises to become a quite powerful cyclone as it moves over the Atlantic especially in this area of the Atlantic where conditions will be optimal for rapid strengthening. Let's change the satellite image so you can see how this tropical wave emerged from Africa yesterday. Currently, the axis of the wave is already over the Atlantic waters, and as is normal with these disturbances, we see a reduction in thunderstorm activity once it enters the marine environment. However, we observe good rotation with this tropical wave, and this morning it has begun to generate new areas of thunderstorms. I also wanted to mention that there is another strong tropical wave over the African continent that will emerge into the Atlantic next week. This other tropical wave could also become a tropical cyclone, but for now, we will focus on this first one. Let's zoom in on the infrared satellite. You can see that at the moment, it looks disorganized. However, notice that it generates strong thunderstorms near the wave's axis, and at least for the next few days, conditions will be marginally favorable for continued gradual organization. By the middle of next week, conditions will be favorable for it to become a tropical depression halfway between the Caribbean and Africa. In fact, over the last 24 hours, the National Hurricane Center has significantly increased the development probabilities. For example, in the 2 a.m. advisory, the probabilities for development over the next seven days increase to 70% as it moves west-northwest. It also has a 20% chance of development over the next two days. One of the main reasons we need to pay attention to this tropical wave, especially in the Caribbean region, is that the high pressure in the Atlantic is currently weakened due to all the cyclones that have developed in recent days. However, forecasts indicate that high pressure could strengthen by the end of next week, which would steer this future cyclone toward the west-northwest, potentially passing very close to the northern Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico. In the GFS model forecast, you can see that by the end of next week, high pressure is expected to strengthen in the Atlantic. This is why we need to be vigilant for any tropical cyclone moving in this direction. Additionally, as I mentioned, conditions in this area will be unusually favorable for rapid strengthening of this system. This can be seen in the European model forecast, which shows a well-defined anticyclone in the upper levels of the atmosphere between Saturday and Sunday, right above what could potentially be tropical storm or hurricane Lee. If this forecast holds true, this future cyclone could have optimal conditions with ventilation in all quadrants, which we know are highly favorable conditions for strengthening. Additionally, this represents conditions of low to no wind shear. In addition to passing near the northeastern Caribbean, we are concerned that any cyclone moving through this area over the next weekend could undergo a significant strengthening process. Obviously, the best case scenario for the Caribbean would be for it to pass to the northeast of the region, as the impacts on the Caribbean islands would be minimal. Let's see what the global model runs say. Let's start with the American model, which has a tropical depression developing next Wednesday. It then maintains a west-northwest track and brings this future cyclone dangerously close to the northeastern Caribbean region. In fact, in its latest run, it possibly has a Category 3 hurricane passing over some of the islands north of the Lesser Antilles and then moving northeast of Puerto Rico. Also, notice that as it moves through this region, it strengthens quite rapidly. This is due to the favorable conditions it will encounter for strengthening. At least in the morning run, it has a track passing just northeast of the Caribbean and possibly over some of the northern Lesser Antilles Islands. This would be approximately 7 to 8 days from now, so it's a long-term forecast, and we will have many days to monitor its evolution. In terms of trends, the American model has been quite inconsistent. Here, you can see the forecast for next Saturday night. In the last 6 runs, we have seen that the GFS model has been very erratic in predicting where this future cyclone would be located. This leaves us with uncertainty 
at least in the GFS model's forecast. However, we have the European model, which has been somewhat more consistent. Notice that by the afternoon hours of Tuesday, it develops a tropical depression and then maintains a west-northwest track over the next few days. In the latest midnight run, this future cyclone is passing northeast of the Caribbean at a fairly safe distance. This would be during the night hours of next Saturday. Also, notice that this future cyclone could be strengthening as it moves northeast of the Caribbean or north of Puerto Rico, but with this track in the European model. The most active areas of precipitation and winds could remain over the Atlantic waters. It would definitely be the best scenario for the northeastern Caribbean region. Now, what trends do we see in the latest runs of the European model? Well, over the past few days, we have seen a trend in which the European model strengthens the high pressure system that will be located north of the Caribbean. Therefore, in the recent runs, it has been bringing this cyclone a bit closer to the northeastern Caribbean region. This is an important trend that we will have to monitor over the next few days, and that's why it's important to stay vigilant in the northeastern Caribbean. The other models also agree that it should become a tropical cyclone by the middle of next week. For example, the German model also has a west-northwest track, with the center of circulation passing just northeast of the Caribbean, similar to the European model. If we look at the ensemble members of the American model, they present different scenarios. Some show tracks passing quite far northeast of the Caribbean at a safe distance, while others have tracks passing over the northeastern Caribbean, which would be the worst-case scenario for the northern Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico. There are even scenarios where it could reach the Caribbean Sea. We definitely have a wide range of possible tracks according to the ensemble members of the GFS model. This means there is quite a bit of uncertainty, but this is normal for a forecast more than six or seven days out. We also have the ensemble members of the European model which paint a much more favorable picture for the Caribbean. Basically, all the members in the midnight run today have a track passing northeast of the Caribbean at a fairly safe distance. We hope that this scenario is the most likely compared to what the GFS model suggests. I also wanted to mention that at least this hurricane season, the European model has been slightly more accurate than the GFS model. This morning, I understand that the highest probabilities are that this future cyclone could be passing just northeast of the Caribbean, but too close for us to be entirely comfortable. Therefore, we need to remain vigilant over the next few days. Additionally, keep in mind that we need to closely monitor this trend in the European model to see if it continues to bring this future cyclone closer to the northeastern Caribbean region. In conclusion, stay calm, there are still many days to go, and it is very likely that it will become Tropical Storm Lee by the middle of next week. By Tuesday or Wednesday, we should potentially have a better idea of how close or far it might pass from the northeastern Caribbean. Well, that's all for the forecast update. I will be providing further updates later today, in the evening or at night, based on the afternoon model runs. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the videos. Go to the bottom of the video, click the red button that says subscribe, and then click the bell icon to receive notifications when I upload new videos. I hope everyone has an excellent weekend. I'll see you later in the afternoon. Goodbye.